Hey, what's up? It's Rob Gordon, the wingman. This is actually a voiceover because the audio was bad. I was at the beach for a ultra light wind test. And you can see there is no wingers because there is not much wind. Uh, there's a few white caps, uh, maybe 10 to 15 miles an hour out there. For this test, I rigged the Axis Pump and Glide 1150, my biggest foil. And I paired it with the 425 Progressive Tail Wing, my biggest tail wing. It is on the red fuse. That's because the, the bigger wings have a thicker profile that matches the red fuse. The thinner wings uh, use the black fuse. There's a good reason uh, that you have to use two different fuses. It's not to make you spend money. It's to keep the profile aerodynamic. I was going to use my F-180, which is a light wind machine, but it popped. So I had to use my 6.2 Mantis. And I didn't even know if it was going to be possible because you can see the wind actually even died more as I was rigging. Uh, and I'm on my 65 liter froth, a pretty small board. So once we get on the water, we know it's super light. We're not even trying to get going here. We're just sitting on the board, flying the wing, seeing if the wing will fly, seeing if we get any forward momentum. We're getting very little movement and just waiting for anything Eventually, I do feel a little something, so I get up, I try. You can see, like, I'm having trouble even getting the wing in the air, and that's when I realize mounting the GoPro to the back of the wing is a mistake for a light wind session because it was pulling the wing down. Normally, if it's windy, I don't mind the weight of that GoPro on the end. But man, when there's no wind and you're just hoping to get that wing out of the water, see, it just keeps falling into the water. And you can see like with the stink bug and that small board, I'm I'm actually fairly far underwater, which I hadn't realized I'm sitting that far, far underwater. Um, so that makes it even harder to get the wing out of the water because I'm, I'm, you know, I don't have the seven foot arms, you know, so I can't just bring the wing up it's just that there's a the limit to what i can do so i just i can't keep my balance i fall in and then yep i'm shark bait look at that that's terrifying and if i was a great white shark i would definitely take a bite out of that sorry for all you people afraid of sharks i am as well uh so yeah let's get back on the board and then we do some another try here just pumping 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 just to even get anything, but nope, can't keep our balance. So we paddle up wind slowly and leisurely thinking about going in. Is this even going to happen? So we try again, look, pump, pump, pump. Just, I have to pump even just to get that board up out of the water and get some momentum. So this is why you want a board that at least floats you if you're going to get out in light winds because you need to be on the surface of the water to start. I do manage to get up, but I'm just pumping against air. There is no wind at all here, so it's really hard to keep my balance. And, of course, we fall again, and we paddle back up some more. I mean, this happened for like 30 minutes. So I'm not going to show you all that footage. Then we get a little lucky. It starts to pick up just a little bit. And I'm going to put a pump counter on here and just watch this go. Oh, thank God. 39. 39 pumps to get on foil. <laughs> so, yeah. And there are no white caps. I mean, this is the Pacific Ocean. This is not a lake. This is an ocean. That was so much work. Yes, this is a hideous jibe, but I'm having to pump just to try and get enough speed to jibe. And and like you heard me, the foil's in the wrong spot. It's really far back, uh, but we made the first one. You can see the beach sort of up ahead, but there's also a rock jetty there. And I try to make it back on this reach, but like I give up after this because it's just so hard. 
Uh, this jibe is a little bit better, um, but unfortunately, the next one on the way out, I end up going off foil, falling in because there's just no wind, and then I'm shark bait for who knows how long out there. Uh, but eventually, I am able to get a little more wind again and get myself up by pumping. It looks like the 1150 gets going around six miles an hour is when you're sort of able to get the the foil up and riding um and i'm not going that fast but i mean there's really not much wind in the in the wing um so i'm just trying to stay up now i think the f180 here i could have been doing pretty good like once i got up i would have been riding uh, you know with a little bit more power but yeah, it just, I mean, it really wasn't very fun <laughs> without the 8.0. Um, I, you know, here you see, I, I have to start pumping just to, just to try and get in. You know, I'm already going downwind. I'm, you know, I'm all the way down past the rock jetty aiming for the beach. That's about a, I don't know, a mile down, half mile down from where I launched, just trying to get in. I don't even want to get back up wind. I just want to get in, um, but I did feel on the pump and glide 1150, like if I knew how to, you know, pump better, I think I could have really gotten some good board pumps out of it. Uh, you see there, you know, it really wants to pump, but I don't really know what I'm doing. So I'm going to use this foil to learn how to dock start. And I think it's going to be really cool for that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Uh, the other option for light wind would be the the access BSC, which it might turn a little bit better, but they both should have, from what I've heard, a pretty similar low end. So here's me, you know, coming in at the beach. So uh, that was not a success. I did get on foil, but it was a ton of work. Every time I jived, it was like so high consequences because if you fell, you'd be in the water for who knows how long and how far out sitting shark bait. Uh, you can see... That's the conditions right now. Really light wind. Probably like maybe 10 miles an hour. The 80 would have made it maybe possible. Maybe a bigger board just so I didn't have to, you know, just getting that wing up high enough to go was pretty tough. But anyway, it was worth doing. Uh, we ended up downwind, so now we're going to walk back upwind. And uh, yeah, this is what the beach looked like when I walked back upwind. It actually might have picked up a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty rough out there. Uh, I think the lessons were, you know, well, don't mount the GoPro and weigh down the wing, have your 8.0. Um, but yeah, have a board that floats you so you can at least get started. Uh, this is the wind graph of when I was out there. You can see when I first went out, it's like seven to 10 with lulls down to three and five. I mean, so that was just not happening. I think when when that starts going up right there to like 10 to 12 with the lulls to seven, like that's when I think I was getting up on foil. Cause I think I got back up wind around 315 or 330. Um, but yeah, I weighed 194 pounds when I got home. So probably cause I burned a bunch of calories pumping and, uh, you know, paddling, but I hope you guys found this experience helpful. It does show that even a big guy can get going in light wind. If I had the ADO, a bigger board, same foil, I think I could have a pretty fun session in similar conditions.